Welcome to video number 7.5 for Physics 102. In this video, we're going to do another example problem with an emphasis on the approximations and constraints part of our problem solving framework. This problem is problem 3.32 in your textbook, which states that the highest barrier that a projectile can clear is 13.5 meters when the projectile is launched at an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. The question we're looking to answer is what is the projectile's initial launch speed? Let's begin by focusing on the problem and sketching a useful picture. So we have the sources of our projectile. In this case, I've chosen a little cannon, which is launching our ball at 15 degrees above the horizontal. The problem states that the highest barrier that this cannon ball can clear is 13 and a half meters with this launch angle. So now let's move on to describe what's going on in this particular problem in words. The ball, once it's shot from the cannon, is acting only under the force of gravity, which is pulling it straight down. There are no forces acting in the horizontal direction, so the velocity in that direction will not change. And this brings us to the emphasis of this particular video, the approximations and constraints. We have our usual approximations and constraints, that we can represent the weight as mg and that there is no air resistance. We see these constraints all the time. But there are two others that you might not have thought of. The first one is in the question as the highest barrier that a projectile can clear is 13 and a half meters. What does this mean? It means that 13 and a half meters is the top of our little cannonball trajectory. And at the top of a trajectory, the vertical component of the velocity is going to be equal to zero. These two approximations are, and constraints are quite a bit more difficult to think of but you'll get better at them with a little practice. The question we're looking to answer is, what is the projectile's initial launch speed? So now that we've focused on the problem, let's begin describing the physics by adding a coordinate system. I'm going to pick a rather typical coordinate system with x running along the ground and y running vertically. Now let's add some vectors. The vector of interest here is the initial velocity of the ball, which is tangent to its path and then a free body diagram. My cannonball is pretty much already a point and I'm running out of space, so I'm going to draw my free body diagram right in the picture. There's only one force here anyway, and it's the weight, and it's pulling it straight down. Now let's begin defining some symbols. Let's begin by defining the height of the wall to be y, 13 and a half meters, and the angle of launch, 15 degrees. We're going to assume that the ball was launched from ground level or that the distance between the back of the cannon and the ground is really small. And therefore, the initial positions of the ball, x naught and y naught, are both going to be equal to zero. We don't know the distance to the wall yet. That's okay, we can just slap a letter on it. Let's call it x. Okay, now let's circle the symbol for the thing we're looking for. We're looking for the projectile's initial launch speed, which in this case is the magnitude of the velocity vector v. Now that we've described the physics, we've set up a coordinate system, we've given ourselves some variables, let's start collecting the equations that we're going to need to solve this problem. This problem is once again dealing with forces, the force of gravity pulling straight down. Thus, as usual, when we have force-based problems, we're probably going to be using Newton's second law. Good old F equals ma. This is in vector form, not very useful, so we're going to follow our usual trick of splitting it into components, the x component and the y component. The only force acting here is in y, and it's the weight, mg, down. We also have a velocity that has both x and y components, but we know how the x and y components are related to each other. The moment of launch, the angle of the velocity vector, is going to be the same as the angle at which it's shot, 15 degrees, our angle theta. And the tangent of theta is there going to be the y component of the initial velocity divided by the x component, opposite over adjacent. The only force acting here is gravity, mg straight down. And near the surface of the Earth, gravity is a constant force, so the kinematic equations apply. We have a set of kinematic equations for the y direction, and we have a set of kinematic equations for the x direction. You'll notice in your problem solving framework that it says at this point to start crossing out terms that are zero. 
the way to do this is to go back to your approximations and constraints. So let's do that. We have this constraint that the projectile starts from ground level, therefore x0 and y0 are 0. So let's cross those out. We also have the constraint that there are no forces and therefore no acceleration in the x direction. So ax is going to be 0 too. And then we have our sort of tricky one, that the wall represents the peak of the projectile's flight. And at the peak of the flight, the y component of the velocity is 0. So anywhere we see a v sub y, we can cross that out. So now we've got a set of equations. We've crossed out all the terms that are 0. Now I'm going to replace everything we've crossed out with a 0. Now we've got a set of equations. It's time to start planning the solution. So let's have a look. We're looking for the magnitude of the velocity vector v. But this is a force problem, so it's probably best to start with Newton's second law. We are really only interested in the y direction. There are no forces in the x direction. And by combining the y component of Newton's second law with the weight, mg, we can determine that the acceleration in y is going to be minus g. The only force acting in the y direction is the negative weight. We've defined y to be positive going up and the weight goes down. We can see this relationship that the net sum of the forces in y equals the negative weight from our free body diagram. This is actually the point of drawing the free body diagrams. Once we have a y, this equation here gives us the initial y component of the velocity. We already know y. Step 1 gave us a y, and so we know everything in this equation except for v naught y. Once we have v naught y, since we know theta, we can use this relationship to solve for v naught x. With v naught x, our target variable v, which is just the magnitude of the velocity, can be calculated in the normal way of calculating the magnitude of the vector. We have the y component of the initial velocity, we have the x component of the initial velocity. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for our target variable. Your quiz is going to provide you different values for y and theta and ask you to actually solve for v. This concludes this video.